Yehova Malak Ola Molamad Yehova Malak Yami Rakis The Megalogai of Yahweh Elyon Elohim is always alive and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness. That the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, humic, infallible, and inerrant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh, Sidkenu, to the highest. And peace be unto the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. And great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk, breath by breath, in the cherishing and in the nurturing of the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of His glory, in order to understand the will of God the Father to the highest. As he has been teaching to us several times through the Old Testament as well, particularly in the book of Leviticus chapter 2, the sacrifice is what he has been taking in an order to represent that. The fine floor is nothing but Christ's pure and perfect humanity in doing Lord God's will. The poured out oil is nothing but being under the indwelling, controlling, mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And the frankincense is nothing but the Lord's great delight. Thus we are taught to bring our day by day breath to a Lord of God in true worship and adoration. That which we have to have learned to be Christ as he has sought forth for us a pattern. And thus, Lord God the Father desires that we, the church age believers, being enabled to bring such a great, wonderful sacrifice, becoming and conforming to the image of His dear beloved Son. Thus, we need to be in the order of the prayers of our priesthood in confession of our sins through rebound. Thus, honoring the great service to Lord God the Father, ministering in connection with His altar, and in tuning with him that is most holy. And thus, dear brethren, one more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of his glory demands our ways, the ratzel approval. As many people do not understand, Proverbs 16, 7, in the delight of the word of the Lord of God, thus they search in peace. They work in the frantic search of their happinesses, their joy. But never they can come back until and unless they could come back and look. We have cleared our debt and our account towards Lord God, what He has designed and kept for us every day. Till He could clear yourself. Till He could come back and build up in the word of the Lord of our God. Till you could do that which is right and perfect in the sight of the Lord of our God. You cannot have that peace. And though he teaches for us many things through his servants and calls us to be his servants, as First Peter chapter four, verse number sixteen, chapter two, verse number sixteen teaches to us. If we are the dolors of the Lord of our God, if we are the servants of that great Lord of our God, then we need to look what is our privilege. We need to understand what is the will. Thus, dear brethren, representing several times to give to Lord God that which is perfect, what He demands to be done, that which is Lord's delight, and in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit alone, we have to execute it. 
Thus, these are the days of Lord God, the Holy Spirit given to us to execute the will of God the Father. Thus, using the privacy of your priesthood in confession of your sins, let's come back and do that which is for our Lord, our God in this church age. Because we find in the present Christendom many believers being not truly hunger for Christ. They are just hunger for the details of life to be fulfilled. They haven't even understood the great passage of Revelation chapter 22 in verse number 19 when they have been said, if you don't come to exegete the word of the Lord of a God, you will have a life, a life wherewith you cannot have entrance into the true life of Christ. Neither you can have an entrance to enter into the holy city gates, neither the things that have been written in the Bible to understand. Thus, dear brethren, we need to look this great privilege given to us. Being just as nominal Christians, you cannot perform this will. But rather we need to be great hunger for the word of the Lord and for his honor. Thus, dear brethren, we shall have a word of prayer and come back and continue our discourse what Christ our Lord our God has kept for us on today's date. The reason is that, dear brethren, because every day as the one who has been kept in the holy temple to do the work of the priest. His duty was to cleanse the wick. And we cannot rely upon a status experience. Today is something new. So you need to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and do the will of God the Father. So burn the burnt wick, cleanse it out, come back and take today what Christ our Lord of God has preserved and kept for us on today's date. So we shall love a word of prayer and continue. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the pale wonders of this great truth. Nothing is more important for you on this earth than to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Nothing is more important for you on this earth to clear your debt that you are due unto the Lord of God day by day. You may think you can have peace, you may think you can have joy, you may think you can have everything. Without clearing your debt with Lord God, without clearing that which is due unto Lord God, the word Ratzal of Proverbs 16.7, you cannot truly enjoy your life. Think over that. Our debt today, what we are. We grieve, we squelch, we wax, we put to test Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Thus, using the privacy of our priesthood in confession of our sins, let's get back to do the unique will of God the Father, which is to honor his word above his name. And as he called several questions, who is blind like my servant? Who is deaf like my messenger? Let's look upon those terms to honor Lord's word only when the word of the Lord of our God is sealed in us to the praise of his glory to the highest. We shall continue after this prayer. Infinitely divine Holy Father, we are thankful for this great privilege which you have given to us to have fellowship through the word on this date as well, O Lord. Because every day you have called for us to have fellowship with thee. And in fact, indeed, if ever we live, we need to walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So, Father, what you have risen and kept for us in today's state, as we are going to study these things, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, would enlighten and challenge us by this message. In Christ's name we pray, Sovereign Lord. In Galatians chapter 3, we were reading, Anotheas, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? And we need to learn over here many things. Who has falsely represented to you the truth? Who has topped you with untempered mortar? So the word Anotheas, those who are unintangible or unintelligible or not understanding, but rather they are foolish without having to look what is the word of the Lord of a God to perceive. When you have been equally yoked with your sicknesses among unbelievers, why are you not able to perceive your thoughts and understand that Lord God has designed us to witness his truth, Lord God has called us to become his disciples, Lord God has called us to grow up as grammatias, Lord God the Father in heaven has called us in return to make disciples of all the nations. Why are you not able to perceive? If you are having sickness, how can you be with them? Thus we need to understand we cannot be without understanding. We cannot be without perceiving what are we in Christ, how are we in Christ, and how can we be equally yoked with unbelievers. 
The problem with us is, dear brethren, we are forsaken the true Lord of our God, who is our salvation by faith alone in Christ alone. We are just considering Christianity to be one among the religion standards to make up our life that we need to have some God on this earth in our pilgrimage trip. But you have lost that he is the only true Lord of a God. You haven't understood he is the one who is going to declare to you the end from the beginning. In declaring the end from the beginning in Revelation 22, he teaches to us, if you may eliminate by the choice of your election, by the choice of your oath which is in your hand, the things that have been given to you in this word of God. And what is that you are eliminating? He says you are eliminating exegesis. He says you are eliminating not to teach them iota upon iota, carrera upon carrera. That's what the present Christendom is all about. You are eliminating word by word, line by line, precept upon precept with proper exegesis, isagogics and categories. Therefore, he says, you cannot be foolish because everything has been given to you and you have to be the person wherewith you can take up the word of the Lord of our God and learn so that you need to come humbly in his presence. That's what he says, kneel down and read the word. You need to cross-check, ask, seek, knock. If you don't ask, he says, the way in Psalms 34, in verse number 4, I sought the Lord my God. He has said the same thing in Matthew 7, 7, seek, knock, and search. And he says the same thing in 2 Chronicles 15, when the people were without the true priest, that is the teaching priest, without the law and without the commandments of God. So you have not sought what is the truth. You have been daubed with this foolish, untempered mortar in the church age. Therefore, he says, you foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? The word baskaino, which is nothing but to slander and to make you by false representations. So here it is nothing but they are being taken into the form of this professed Christians. So they have bewitched you not to obey the truth. And he says for us, you have suffered so many things in vain, if it were that is in vain, in verse number 4. Oh, so the point over here for us, he says, dear brethren, that why are you so greatly suffering? Why do you want to suffer in vain? Suffer by taking every day, carrying your cross, following my Christ. You are suffering without purpose. These things, what have been given to perfect in the spirit, always leads you in truth. You think you can become perfect in the flesh? No way. And he says, this is what shall I learn from you, or my antenna to become a disciple of you, that you have received the spirit by the works of the law or by hearing of faith. So we need to understand, dear brethren, when we are in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, it is that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which has already made a great hedge so that Satan cannot even touch you, he says in 1 John 5, 16. It cannot even touch you. It is what we are breaking that hedge. At the moment of salvation, you have been sanctified, kept apart as Lord's beloved children. So that you need to know, we cannot be in the way the world of present Christendom. And to read out some of the things written by the man known as A.W. Tozer, looking upon how the present Christendom is, the present evangelism is, on his book of God and Men, he writes over here for us to quote, Evangelism as we know it today does produce some real Christians. But the spiritual climate into which many modern Christians are born does not make for vigorous spiritual growth. Do you know how the growth will come? Day by day when you grow up from milk to bread, from bread to meat. Your spiritual growth comes when you take in day by day the word of the Lord of our God. Therefore in the Bible doctrine we are compared first to drink the sincere milk. 1 Peter 2, 1 and 2. Then man does not live by bread alone but by every word. Matthew 4, 4. Deuteronomy 8, 2 through 4. He says... The one who are still drinking milk, they are not able to have that skilled knowledge to differentiate between the righteous word. 
Thus, what you need to be now, to discern what is right and evil, you need to eat strong meat. Hebrews 5.14 So your vigorous growth of spiritual standards are not produced because you are not having those bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teachers whose duty is to teach the word of the Lord of a God, whose duty is to train you up every day in Bible doctrine. And you are not interested to find such men as, you, as well. The duty is nothing but to teach the word, because Revelation 22, 19 gives a great caution of warning in the book of Prophetess for us. Being pastor teachers, if we don't completely teach the word of the Lord of our God from Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 22, 21, indeed even we will be eliminated, he says. Therefore, importance of iota upon iota, carrera upon carrera, what Christ my Lord, my rock, my God said in Matthew 5, 17 through 20, not even a single iota carrera shall be let loosed. I came to establish them. And this is what we need to learn. When he came to establish us in the standards, then how can we eliminate? Without exegesis, you cannot. You have to teach with exegesis. That's what he said in John 1, 18, exegio mine. Therefore, today you are able to produce evangelism, Christians, but not the vigorous spiritual Christians because they don't have that valor and vigor in them because they have lost it. Since they do not know when they become Christian, the number one principle is that they have to be disciples. Disciples were only called as Christians. Not every knucklehead who could think, believing in Christ, you could become a Christian. You are now just into the royal family of Lord God, but now you have to grow up. Take up your cross and follow my Christ. That's what he says. If you don't continue in the word of the Lord of our God, you are not his disciple. Anyone who loves more than me is not worth If he loves the details of life more than the word of the Lord of God, he is not worth for me to be my disciple, he said. So the principle what the evangelism should teach is that you are being now born again in Christ, but now you have to be a disciple. That's what Matthew 13, 52 is all about. You join there as disciple, but you grow up to become grammatias, New Testament scribes and theologians. And this word grammatia, as he says, in return, when we have been grown up, when we have been as great vigor and viler Christians, in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit alone, nothing else than that, then we can be in the solid environment of spiritual growth. Because we need to have our ground not to let go. We are not the people to eliminate, but rather we are the people to establish. Therefore, he says in Revelation 20 to 19, if anyone removes or eliminates from this word of the Lord of a God, even his part shall be removed. And what is that we are removing? Not able to teach them the entire council of Bible doctrine from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 20 to 21 with proper dispensing technique of dispensations with proper exposition of isagogics and categories. And with the right exegetical word of categorical of exegesis. We are not expounding them in those standards. But what are we doing today? We are just eliminating. Therefore, Apostle Paul says, you foolish Galatians. You think you are running in vain. You have suffered these things in vain. If it were only for the sake of vain, then what was the need for you to suffer? The church age believers where ample of the people have been equally yoked with unbelievers in their sicknesses like the way how Christ of Lord of our God says in Exodus 15, 26, None of the sicknesses I shall get upon you which I brought upon Egypt. Then why are you suffering without any purpose in such sicknesses? Job suffered sicknesses for the point to prove that he was right and upright for the testimony given to him or given on behalf of him by Lord God the Father towards Satan, the one who accuses you. That's what we read in Zechariah 3, Satan, Satan. Today, if Lord God could take a testimony on behalf of you to Satan and say, look at my servant, such and such. But Satan would get and say, look at your servant, such and such. You thought he is worth, but he has upon him the garments of filth the garments of what we call as human excreta. 
Every day he's doing the sin. Every day he's grieving and squelching and waxing and lying. And these are the people whom you trusted, Lord. But Lord God wants to prove that in this church age as well, like Christ conforming to his image, giving to Lord God the fine floor, making in the power of the pouring out of the oil and giving Lord God to our life or our life to Lord God as a frankincense. He demands that even we, in the church age, given much, expected much, we shall fulfill the role of Christ. The most holy oblations we need to pay to Lord God. So on behalf of you, if Christ our Lord of our God is talking and proving that, see my children in the church age, how great they are. They are the holy of the holy, most sacred dwelling place. And then you get sufferings. Then that's a purpose for you not to be in vain. But that's a purpose. But if you are suffering for your own misery, for your own sin nature activities, then that's no purpose. And that's what the question is asked. You are perfected in the flesh? No, you are beginning in the spirit. How you can perfect in the flesh? You cannot. You cannot reach perfection in the flesh. And he says, you foolish Galatians, who has falsely represented the truth? That's nothing but the work of Satan. Satan has its agents. Instead of Christ, you find Antichrist. Satan has its plan to execute. Satan doesn't say to come every day to Bible class. Because Satan knows, reject the word. If ever you have believed in Christ, it's okay. Do not go further for that. Leave that nonsense to the theologians. Why do you want to look upon exegesis? Why do you want to take up your life to be accountable? <laughs> and you know the world, the word of the Lord of God teaches to us, still you cannot clear your account as of depth to be cleared. What's up? We read that in Proverbs 16.7. It begins with Ratsa in the original Hebrew. It's not the way how the translation says in the English, the ways of the one who has pleased the Lord. It says Ratsa Yahweh, the rack, or his way of life, his paths of life. Ratsa, here he says, when you have cleared your account. And that's what many people don't understand. Ratsa Yahweh. Your account has been cleared before the Lord God in your way of life. Your enemies also will be in peace with you, he says. Since Satan says, what is the purpose of going and taking exegesis? If you don't come to know the word Ratsa, which is nothing but you need to clear your debt day by day before the Lord. Then no matter however you are searching your happiness in this church age will not abide for you. Therefore, we find a great passage for us in Isaiah chapter 45. Because we have to become vigor and valor Christians looking upon the time. And in Isaiah chapter 40, 48, not 45, in 48 we have these words which are very, very essential for us to look. As many people don't understand from where they will get the peace, from where and how they will make up their life. But here we find this great passage which certainly encourages us to look what is our fate and what the Bible says for us that we need to be. He says in verse number 12, Hearken unto me, O Jacob and Israel, my called. I am he, I am the first Risha, and I am the last Akar. Indeed, the hand of me hath founded the earth, the right hand of me hath measured the heavens, and it is I the one calling, and the one whom I call, they shall stand up together, that's the heaven and the earth. And he says, be in your assembly and know that the one who listens and the one the Lord God hath declared, because he loved him and he will do his pleasure on Babylon and his arm shall be on the Chaldeans. That is what, for the deliverance of the Jews, because he has chosen them. And furthermore, he says in verse number 15, I, I, I speak. He uses the word thrice, representing once again the Trinity. It is I who speak. Indeed, I call him. I bring him. That is what I proclaim. I get him to the work with great introduction. And I will prosper, advance. That's what the word is. Prosper, advance. As we advance in years, we need to look 
We need to advance in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, not retard, but advance. Because if it is the Lord God who has brought us, it is the Lord God who has called us, then, he ha then we have to be in a point to look. It is He who is going to advance us. It is He who is going to train us up. And these are very, very important things for us, dear brother. It is He who is going to advance us to the praise of His glory. And what does he advance? If you're still returning back, not clearing your accounts or debts, how can he advance you? He can advance you only for your sickness, for your illness and for your unhappinesses on this earth. You may think you're accountable and you're free because you have been pious and good, but Lord God looks your inward nature. If your inner mind is not being happy by daily taking in the word of the Lord of a God and doing the work of the Lord of a God, then you are not advancing at all. The world may look outward appearance, men may look outward appearance, but we are called to look inward appearance in Christ. How much of your doctrine do you know? He represents us in His holiness. He represents us in His truth. He cross-checks us again in His standards of His holiness and in His truth. Therefore, he uses the word kasad, the unfailing love of Lord God, and with the truth he has covered our sins. And when we have been covered, we have to have that fear in the Lord God when he says, the fear of Lord God is to depart from evil. But we are not understanding what we have been covered with, what we have been taken in truth with. We are still looking upon our life thinking that we have advanced. You may say now in the 21st century of this world, now we are come to New Year 2020 as well, you might have advanced in many areas of your life. That includes the world waves. But have you advanced to look yourself in the biblical point of view? What have you been kept for? Why have you been kept for? What is your purpose? If you are a pastor teacher, the bona fide duty, to study and teach the word of the Lord of a God with proper isagogics, categories, and exegesis. Have you ever known about that? To advance. What is the Bible saying that every believer in the church age is? Who were the first called Christians? They were disciples. Then what the Bible says in Mark 16, 15, preach the gospel. In Matthew 28, 18 through 20, teach in all the nations. Just don't quote the scriptures. You do not know the full essence of that meaning. Just don't quote it and keep it up for your church as a tagline. Because many morons who do not know, though they have church been established near 90 years, they haven't even made one single branch so that they can go up and make many missionaries or in the standards of the way what they have been called to be in the church looking upon the time, then simply don't write this quotations for you and some morons think first corinthians 15 58 is the part of his life and is able to talk in terms of scriptures not even able to look the burden behind that they just love to add that quotation to their books if they want to have us publish the souvenirs and they say teaching all nations knowing not the word teach you will be held liable dear brethren for every word because you are just thinking your standards in your life upon the vocabulary of translations. You have not developed your life according to the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic standards. In fact, indeed, as the man wants to look upon and make this body what it is and what it is not, and no man on this earth, right from first Adam till to the last one, apart from my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who came in the form of this flesh. Only my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ have understood what is the power of this flesh. What is the structure wherewith he has made this man. Apart from that, the world, what they are searching. They want to say mind will be like this. They want to say hand will be like this. They want to say leg will be like this. This is the anatomy in it. This is that. This is this. They are just guessing their works. They are not accurate. When the finite man cannot understand the finite man on this earth when the finite mind cannot understand the finite man though he is uh, though he is available to you as the scripture says in john chapter 3 from where the spirit cometh and where it goeth you know not it is like the wind so they know not from where it came from where it goes likewise they do not understand this flash how powerful it is 
how they have been used to completely take in the word from Genesis 1 1 to Revelation 20 to 21. They do not truly understand what is this physical anatomy is all about. They take till Christ could come or the rapture of the church or even after the millennium they want to look upon this flesh. The one who created it only he can give you the limitations of this flesh. The standards of this flesh has just shown many men in the Bible. When the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, you know what all he did with the flesh, how powerful it is. But we have been now indwelt in the flesh. Can't we kneel down and read the Bible at least once? Can't we kneel down and write the Bible at least once? Therefore, Psalm 16, 7 says, Lord, I barak, barak the word, I kneel before thee, O Lord, teach me thy counsel. Kneeling, we learn the word of the Lord of our God. That's the importance. Why does he say three times about a day in Daniel's case, morning, evening, and, and morning, afternoon, and evening, thrice a day he prayed. And when we read in Ezekiel 28, in verse number 3, do you think your senate is more brilliant and wisdom than the man Daniel? And who is representing? He's representing the world where Satan is asked from verse number 11 of Ezekiel chapter 28, but from number verse, 28 chapter verse 1 through 8, he talks about the prince who is nothing but the assistant of him. In that we meant to say what? Though we are not in the flesh, though the lower ranks of Satan, they are been there as pantocrators on this earth, not pantocrators, cosmocrators on this earth. Pantocrators is my Christ. So as they are in the cosmocrators in the ranks, they cannot be matched to a man like Daniel in his wisdom. Therefore, when you unsheath your sword, they will say, we are nullified. We cannot stand before that wisdom. As Acts chapter 6 in verse number 10 we read, Though the people came along, Alexandrians or Sanitians or the people from the rest of the Asia, when they came, they couldn't stand before the great wisdom and the knowledge with which Stephen spoke. They couldn't resist. And they went along to develop false cults, false witnesses. So here we have a man, Daniel, three times a day kneeling down. People may think we cannot kneel down, we have some body problems. Since you haven't knelt in the right age, in the right work, that's why you have these body problems. What did Lord God say for us? Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. We read that, isn't it, in Isaiah? He swears seven times. And he says, I swear, 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 seven times. That every knee shall bow before my presence, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Christ, the Lord of our God, being added by Apostle Paul in his Philippians epistles for us, the mystery epistle of it, so that we can understand the deep things what has been written in Isaiah. And we need to look. Because we think we cannot have our flesh. We think we cannot understand the standards of this flesh. But Lord God has revealed them to us through the Bible. Moses, till the age of 120 years, his eyesight was not dimmed. Caleb, though he is 80, he says, I have the vigor of 40 in me. Job open of an ass. When Samson came in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit slave, thousand Philistines. David, though he was much smaller than the way how in structure we look towards Goliath, he says battle belongs to the Lord. You need to understand the power and the vigor of this flesh. How powerful this, this body has been made by Lord God to the praise of his glory to the highest. How powerful it is. We are not just looking into those terms. We are just making up our lives to be in life. You believe some other person who comes in his linear activities towards this flesh and he says taking 100 men, 200 men as trial and they say this is what we have found out through the study and you want to believe that study. You haven't read the biblical viewpoint about your flesh in Bible doctrine. How powerful is this flesh? This flesh could clear in Christ matter for us in his vicarious sufferings, the sin to put an end, even the last enemy, death being erased. So we need to be in this flesh powerful and vigor. 
Only do not what the Bible says not to do. Bible says you drink but not drunkenness. Bible says you have with your wife and the things pertaining to your sex but do not indulge much in the sex. What the Bible says you restrict and what your lust says you go on. If we would follow clearly and accurately what the Bible teaches to us, particularly in the Levitical Code, the cleant and the unclent food, but when we come to the New Testament, everything has been sanctified and kept apart. That's another issue. But the people of the Jews, when you go back and look, they followed strictly that rituals. And we find for our shock the 40 men from the Jews who wrote this Bible to us. In fact, indeed, when we look into the case of Ezekiel, we certainly should get shocked. A man who, who slept on the left side 390 days, on the right side 40 days, representing 430 years of their erecting or eliminating their Sabbath. And he says to that man, you shall eat only such and such food, only worth of 200 grams, not more than that. He shall drink only so much worth of water, not more than that. He's giving him some instructions. And crystal clear olive oil, the purpose of its work. And mixed with wine, it would give you healing effect on your wounds. So many things. And he says, I am going to use this plant to establish once again the fir tree, the box tree. And many trees we read. And he says, these leaves of these trees I'm going to use for your health. If ever you're going to degenerate. And he says, in the millennium time, even 100 years is less. And imagine what is the power in this flesh given to us in the biblical viewpoint. And the man is at in study of the search of this physical anatomy to look how it reacts. And he relates that to the study of some rats and dogs. Lord God made man in his own image, the first Adam, and through that first Adam, the progeny, what we get along through Noah and then through Abraham, particularly through Noah, Shemam and Japheth. And when Lord God made this man in such a beautiful, marvelous wonder, and he demands you worship now in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in spirit and biblical truth. You are equally yoked with unbelievers, worrying about your sicknesses, worrying about your way of life, worrying about your thinking. Doesn't he say for us in Matthew 6, these things will be worried by the pagans, but are you of so much of little faith? Do you not think I shall provide you? The only thing he says, in whatever state I am, I need to be content, Apostle Paul, to do the will and the work of Lord God. I know how to be abased and I know how to be lowed. I know how to be content in whatever manner I have been called. Because he says for you, your flesh is something superb. Therefore, he says, sanctify your spirit and soul and your body to Lord God. Sanctify. What a great work we have with this flesh, kneeling down and reading the word of the Lord of a God, kneeling down and writing the word of the Lord of a God, kneeling down and doing the things like the way how Daniel has been recorded and kept thrice a day he used to kneel in his presence. And even the cosmocrators couldn't match to the brilliance and to the wisdom of Daniel what he had, though he had half of the testament with him. But we have today the completed canon scripture. Do not follow the studies of the world because man cannot understand the standards of man as even you look Sadhguru who talks about it, the same second coming of my Christ in one of his video because there are some Americans who say he's going to come to America and some of the people they say they're going to come in Mount Olive as the way we read it is in Mount Olive and then he says when Christ could come some of the people they adapted to much of their banks, so they say, even though you come, even such great incidences happen, we don't want to look and go back to Christ. And he goes to say, in his physical phenomenon, it's nothing but a natural phenomenon.
that will be the way how we are going to interpret your flesh as well because God has given this flesh to be something great he calls us this flesh to be the temple of the living Lord of our God he calls us glorify Lord God in your flesh he calls to secure us our flesh in the standards of the things what he has delineated for us in the Bible even in the minute things what you eat and what you drink if an unbeliever loves to describe about the second coming of my Christ, the way how awkward it looks, so they are able to test over this flesh and they are able to produce to you those drugs, pharmacas, or pharmaticas, and not able to understand the real worth of this flesh. In the same way, when we are just talking about the flesh so much, then how much more it should be the viewpoint of my Christ in the spiritual phenomenon through Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to give us and make us in our lives when we obey His word and fulfill His will to flow peace like rivers of waters. Only clear your account. Every day, dapped, you clear it off. Every day, you have two hours, 40 minutes to, do, to give to Lord God, the Father. Pay it gradually grow up just look in your lifestyle how you're scheduled over there if you are a student you sleep 10 hours to 12 hours you have lost half of the day you go to school and spend another eight hours then where is the time for you after getting tired and coming back to home and some of the people work for 16 hours a day yet you have to pay back to the lord you cannot rob from the lord his time if you rob, you are going to work 16 hours where your body also needs rest. And indirectly your flesh is going to fall for sickness. You will not understand these things, dear brother. Systematically what Lord God has designed for you, keep it over there. Give to him that which is due unto him. Know the marvelous effects of this flesh. This flesh is called now the temple of the living Lord. Have you just come to my country, India? Just go back and look the way how they sanctify and keep the temples, the heathen temples. They keep it so pure and clean. Your body is now the temple of the living Lord of a God. How is it you want to enter into something which is against the will of God in this flesh? Your drunkardness, your drug addiction, dope addiction, your multiple affairs, indulging lot, into the lust of this testosterone and many many more things just come and look in my country India you will consider how they worship these temples with much sanctity and we have been called now to be the temple of the living Lord of our God then how much are we really worried about this flesh because we have a purpose, dear brethren. We have a purpose to be greater than Daniel. We have a purpose to be greater than Isaiah. We have purpose. In fact, indeed, Christ our Lord of our God says, if you believe, you can do greater things than me. We have been left over here with the purpose of Lord's work. We cannot indulge ourselves into the lustful patterns. We cannot indulge ourselves into the way the world thinks the flesh is all about. And as I've said you, Sadhguru, if he loves to look, the second coming of my Christ, it's a public video, you can watch it in the YouTube. The one who doesn't even have spiritual phenomenon without believing in my Christ, no one can. In fact, indeed, Zakir Nayak or Sheikh Ahmad Dida or any other moron who would believe two things that he can comment about the Bible because they do not even know the original of the Bible is from Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. In fact, indeed, many leaders in the present Christendom as well, including Pope, who do not have exposition towards the original language of the scriptures will love to quote in the vocabulary standards of which it has been translated they do not go and look what is in the original language of the scriptures isn't it so including them they cannot defend because bible is a spiritual phenomenon and you need to understand when christ himself has given a clue for us in john 1 18 exegiomai in matthew 5 he says iota upon iota carrera upon carrera then we need to dig them back in the original hebrew greek and Aramaic. your translations cannot help you to sustain when if it's the case with the christendom then how much more about the Sadgurus or zakir nayags or sheikh Ahmadidas would love to interpret my Bible my Lord's Word how much these are like that uncircumcised Philistine 
They do not even know what is the power of Bible doctrine. They do not even know what is the power when being driven by that slingshot of a stone, smooth stones, against his great weapons, how it could destroy his skull. He has called us to be his stones and pebbles, isn't it? Anything that goes against the knowledge of Bible doctrine, he says, pull it down and trample it under your feet because you have been said, given power to trample Satan under your feet. Then why you worry? Why you worry what these people say? Just pull them down and show them the real Christ. Show them if they don't believe in my Christ who said the way, the truth and the life, just let them come to know through your holy manner walk of life at least. Let them come to know when you open up your mouth to put such foolish men, ignorant men, to be shutting their mouth. Doesn't he say for us in First Peter 2.15, it is his will to shut the mouth of this ignorant and foolish man. Then are we doing the will of God the Father? In the past he said, these commandments you shall do and you shall live. But in the present he says, if you love me, guard my commandments and perform it. The question is, do we truly love him? If you love him, you will depart from evil because you know you, through Kassad and Ahmed you have been taken as a propitiatory shelter to my Christ. But we are not looking in the standards what the word of the Lord of God has to say for us. Because you think the translations are great enough, are good enough. No. Just look into this word, Rats of Proverbs 16, 7. That's how Satan comes. It makes you not to go back and dig the word. It says, who is having time now for exegesis? It says many reasons, but you're losing out your great portion in the heaven, which is going to be given for you after your judgment at the Bema throne of Christ. You're losing it out. In fact, indeed, if the pastor teacher doesn't teach to in proper exegesis, do not believe that pastor You shall not believe that pastor, no matter whatever theological qualifications he may have, no matter whatever great experience certificates he may have, no matter how many countries he might have visited, without exegesis is not at all worth to be called as a pastor. The world may be happy to, th to say and to think he is really great for us because that's the world like people like priest you sow to the wind and you will reap war wind the world may look in those terms but bible doctrine says if he hasn't come for exegesis do not believe that pastor throw him out because he's taking out your spiritual wealth and that's what it is today in our pulpits we need to go back and once again change every system what they have inculcated in these minds of these innocent men. And we cannot call you as innocent as well because you have your knees. You can bow down then and there itself and you can ask Lord God the Father to be guided, to be given you the truth, to make you to understand, to reside in truth as David prays in Psalm 119, not David, but the way the father of Ezra, when he writes, Father, take away from me these lies. Show me the straight paths, the paths of reality, the paths of truth. For that cause I kneel down in the presence of the Lord. Teach me in thy counsel, he says in Psalm 16. And after you have guided me, receive me unto glory. What a privilege it is for us. What a great reality it is for us. And yet what are we doing today in our pulpits? We are least bothered. Are we really listening Bible doctrine in our pulpits? Have you ever thought of that? If you don't go back to original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic with proper exegetical categories of thoughts, you haven't been taken out to the truth, but rather you have been daubed with untempered mortar with your lies, pastor, lying pastor in your pulpits. Who has come for the sake of his belly? Who has come for some pieces of bread or for some handful of barley to survive on this earth. He is not true pastor from the head of the department of the church. A true pastor, he says in John 10, he shall lay down his soul for the flock. The true pastor will give his every facet of his soul to be taken and to go for study and to teach them the truth. 
And doesn't he say why my people are perishing? They're perishing for the lack of knowledge in Hosea 4, 6, long back. Not now, long back. And thus the word says, you know, heaven and the earth may pass away, but his word abideth forever. And that's the reason we can find till today. It is the same, though Hosea has written long back. People are perishing, people are loving Christ, but not with a zeal, not with the doctrine, not with the mind of Christ. And how sad it is, this physical anatomy of the flesh. What Lord God has designed and kept is so great and unique to kneel down and to read the word, to kneel down and to write the word, to kneel down and to make up your life to the praise of his glory, to the highest, fulfilling every time. Once for God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, 22 times kneeling down and writing the word of the Lord of our God. That's what we constructed long back, sleeving out the lion and Goliath concept, isn't it? The beer, the lion and the Goliath concept. Your knees have been so, uh, your body itself has been made so powerful. He knows how to adjust your weight. He knows how to make up your life while you kneel down in his presence. But we say, no, Lord, we have better doctors. We have better people who could be either homeopathic or allopathic or naturopathy who could change our lives. <laughs> your accounts have to be cleared. If your ways, your accounts are not cleared, your enemies will not be in peace with you. Who are your enemies? The world, the flesh, the devil, the unholy trio. Devil is always awaiting because Lord God has said and prayed for us in John, 4, John 12 through 17. These are the people that have kept thy word, sanctified them. I also sanctify myself through the word. Use them for my work, he prayed. So devil knows very well every believer is powerful weapon on this earth. Devil knows very well every believer will be a great revolutionary one. He would be free from the mental cobwebs, schizophrenia, sicknesses. And he would be depending purely upon to live for Christ and to die for Christ. So Satan knows very well what a believer is, how powerful you are. The only thing is that you do not know what you are because you have someone about you who say that what I say is perfect and they say you haven't been given till the Holy Spirit. You need to come to my church many days. You need to do some good works. And you know how they lead them up. They don't give you the equal rights. With I, they get illness. They say only I, I, I. But they don't give you to be with we. That is nothing but wellness. Or W, wellness. And when you come that we, we together, which is nothing but W-E. We have been called in Ephesians 4, 11 through 13, entire church equipped for the ministry of Christ. So they don't give you your will. They don't give you what is the Lord's will. So they say, you have to be still under me. You are still my slave. Whenever I am tired, just press my legs because I have been a great minister. Where is the freedom? They are just treating more horrible than slaves, those who come to learn the word of Lord. And these things we have noted long back in the regions where we go to serve. I said, why do you want to catch my feet? They said, no, Master, you were teaching for us a whole day. I think your legs will be paining. So he said, I said, just get out from here. But the other people who say, if they don't do that work, they will be not given the gift. What a sad thing it is for us to note. Though Lord God has given every believer to be so powerful, he is using such men who are being used as the agents of Satan, not to give the individual believer what he is at the moment of salvation, by faith alone in Christ alone, the 40 things bestowed unto him. Actually compiled by Lewis Perry Chaffer, once again revisited and being taken correction, by Robert Bunker Thieme, you will find that 40 things given to every believer at the moment of salvation. And that one is revocable because you sin, you lose the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit controlling you, but not indwelling. So you use once again rebound and get back into the controlling power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. But the dwelling is permanent. So every believer have to know what are you, what are the privileges given to you, what is the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, what are you now in the temple of the Lord God. 
what is that if they have been given gifts if it is for the pastor teacher his burden if it is for the ministration or administration gift what it is you have to know that the gift of helps the gift of hospitality and the gift of evangelism the temporary gifts being seized up do not rely upon them thinking that I need to speak in tongues then only I have the fellowship of the Holy Spirit no that's blasphemy after the completion of the kind of scripture he says in 1st Corinthians 13 8 these things shall be seized but we have now the completed one what is it the completed kind of scripture that's how the Christendom is not depending upon what the Bible says. It is depending upon what such morons who do not even have the knowledge of original language of the scriptures enter into the pulpit and they are defiling the church. They are ruling the church like ravenous wolves. And they say, we come in the power of Holy Spirit to your place with anointing oil, with kerchiefs, and these people, the problem is, you know, they don't read the word. They don't even go for with being such pastor teachers who could have the burden to rightly divide the word of truth. They want to have instant, you know, everything, instant healing, instant to be free from miracles. They want all those things. And these people catch hold of that market and they love to give you instant healing, instant method of miracles by producing false men to be witnesses. And they say, even if I go to that place, even I will be healed. But they do not know they have to clear their account every day. That's how Satan blinds their minds. You have something to clear with the Lord, then your enemies also will be in peace with you. You don't allow to clear this account. You don't want to pay off your debt to the Lord. And you say you are being happy because you have been witnessing by someone to say, I went to such and such ministry. They gave me such and such oil. I have been healed. When he laid out his hand upon me, I trembled and I fall. And he goes on to say, I am a prophet now. Idiotic morons these are. At one end, even believers, knowing not my Christ, they allow to defame him. On the other end, these morons know not the word of the Lord of our God categorically, dispensationally. In fact, indeed, to look the powerful work of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, in the spiritual gifts, permanent and temporary ones, what they were, and after the completion of the canon, what they are now, and we establish the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, gift through properly and rightly dividing the word of truth, not understanding all these things. Do you know? This men just, they come. They come for what? To prove that they have been given this gift. And they love to tell all these things. They have made my Christendom to be ruined because of their foolish levels of understanding the word. What the word says, they don't want to look. What the people demand, they want to look. And they want to rise false witnesses. They want to rise and tell many things so that even the other one who is listening, he will have some sort of small hope, a good thing came, because he wants to be free from the sicknesses of confusion. He just want to be free. He don't want to be in tensions, he don't want to be in distress, he want to have peace, peace, peace. But the word is very simple in the same chapter of Isaiah 48 when he says, there is no peace, said the Lord God, unto the wicked. Wow, you are not in accord with Bible doctrine. The word is very clear for us, dear brother, no matter what you may think. These words that have been penned and kept, Lord God demands us even to be in the standards of this word. In the fire, whenever he says, he's talking to us. Fire representing the word of the Lord of our God. We need to meet and match his word. We cannot go anything apart from that. So the word wicked is nothing but Russia. Who is he? He's a criminal, he says. He is an hostile to Lord God because of his guilt. He is no way far better than an unbeliever, ungodly man. So what does he do? He acts wickedly. He has been called to do his works wickedly. And he troubles. And he goes on to prove what he is doing is correct. But the word says, no peace to the wicked, rasha, criminal. 
you are a criminal not paying the debts of the Lord you are a criminal not clearing the guilt before the Lord and you are Russia and he says for such men no peace and you want to go back and look for oil business you want to go back and look for those great men you think they are they're anointed because of huge throngs they follow no, narrow is the gate you would find few men to come to take in Bible doctrine. It's a straight gate, he said. Because the way how these people think, if they're a huge crowd, if they're huge men they're following, that's a huge blessing ministry. No, that's lie. In fact, indeed, when my Christ came, many people followed him, many much strong came him for listening of the word of the Lord of our God and to have the truth. This men don't teach to you the truth, neither the word of the Lord of our God. They teach you to how to make money and beg money from you and not teach the truth. If ever they want to talk, they will talk some orator rats. How can you produce every believer perfect and complete if you have been given this bona fide gift when you have some millions of people listening to you? Have you ever cross-checked the spiritual growth? Just don't kid yourselves. He said, little flock fear not. The little flock with 12 men, what he started, reached the entire world. And in the world today, many people believing in my Christ. Because that's the truth. Though the world believes it or not, his word abideth forever. Whether Sadhgurus or any other men who love to teach and who love to talk about their standards of exploring their moron minds and becoming idiots, who cares? The word says, it abideth forever. That's it. Heaven and the earth will pass away. That's it. But his word abideth forever. So we follow the word, not the words of this man. So we have to understand there is no peace to the wicked. No peace, no shalom, no completeness, no perfectness to the one who is a criminal, who is a guilt. Who is not doing the will of Lord God the Father. To him, there is no peace. No matter whatever you may think. No matter you may say you have great knowledge. Without exegesis you will not even find an ounce of knowledge in your life. Christ our Lord our God himself exemplified John 1.18 exegeomai. Then who are we to withhold it back? Whether they may be followers or subscribers or hearers or phobias of this word I don't care. I am answerable to Lord God not to men like you. Whether you may think it's evil, you may think it's cult or heretic. I seldom care about it, not even to the dust of the scales of my feet. What the word says we need to preach. If he has said for us, El me not even a single word, iota upon iota, carrera upon carrera, then who are we to support those churches who are going worse by worse, not even able to go for exegesis and how we can call them. They are the bona fide gifted men from head of the department of the church of my Christ. No way. We cannot call them as pastors, though they may design themselves as bishops or popes or ravidas or episcopalans. Ravidas meant to say reverends and doctorates. Do you know I have names for them? Claptes, Lastes, Misthotes, Tupas, Canapes, Tiflos, Sheruras oriented minded pastors these are. I have the names from the Bible, from the Greek and Hebrew. They may have their names, but what the Bible calls, these are liars, these are not worth, these are covenant breakers, these are the people who change. They are the becoming of robbers, these are the liars, these are the thieves, these are the hired servants, these are the proud ones. They may call me in those terms, I don't mind, because we all will stand at the judgment seat of Christ and Lord God is my witness for the words that I speak. And this is what we learn. Though we may find in the 21st century many people quoting about the scriptures of Paul and Peter, how many of them are like Paul, how many are living like a life of Paul. If they're not able to be there for their rise of salary by 5,000 or 10,000 Indian currency, they say we shall let go the church. We will search another church. But Apostle Paul, he was there without food and water, even in the cold streams of water. 
Can you prove it in reality? Can you have really Christ formed in you? Before Christ could be formed in you, have you ever saw or thought of the scriptures with the pain of their risk in their life they have written and given to us, delivered unto us, the life at least like Paul? Can you walk like him? Whom you're kidding with? Lord God says, no peace to the wicked. No peace to the criminals, not the criminals as English vocabulary could say. Criminals in the sense of Bible doctrine who are hostile, who are aliens to large word. They are aliens, in fact, indeed, without exegesis, isagogics and categories. And these are not the Lord's helpmen. These are traitors to Christ. These are deceivers to Christ. And that's a very great pain we need to look in our pulpits. They're really great traitors for us in our midst today. Having their great names, having their great fame, having to show forth to the world so many people follow. And above all, showing forth to the world what an income they have. <laughs> At least learn from the life of William Carey, dear brother, and look into the analysis of his charts, of his income. Forty percent to the things pertaining to his household and other helping poor men. 60% for evangelism and missionary work. He paid back. What do you pay today? You think your life is permanent on this earth? You think you can make up your life on this earth in the standards of making to grow up your potty belly? What is your life? You're paying half of the income only for your medical bills. We know that. You're just happy to pay off your life in the medical bills. And the people will say, these morons, you haven't given tithe, you have robbed from the Lord, so you're paying medical bills. <laughs> Every believer, without giving his time, minimum two hours, 40 minutes, to the presence of Lord God the Father, will pay every day. In the course of his life, as he says, enough is the evil you have for the day. As he teaches to us, every day you will pay. You will pay, you will incur your debt. You will not clear your debt, but you will incur. You will add to your debt. Doesn't he say, I am debted to the world to preach the gospel in Romans 1? It's just the words that you quote. And we find in our churches today, they allow to publish their souvenirs. They love to say they are humans, just writing a quotation of that word, teaching all nations. Do you know the word Mantano? Making disciples of all nations. Just think practically where we are. Have you had enough disciples in your church so that they can grow up to become grammatias? So that they can in return make themselves disciples of the world? We don't find them. We find only the people saying, God blessed me with a wife, God blessed me with a job, God blessed me with a new car. <laughs> That's their growth. I don't deny that them have a successful life. But without having in the point of Bible doctrine, your details of life are misery rather than to make you to be happy or to be successful or to be prosperous. They come in the point of misery for you. They don't come in the point of successful happiness. You're just kidding your life, dear brother. As the physical anatomy they cannot find, how they can think with a finite mind, they can search the infinite. When these morons talk about my Christ, talk about my Bible. This is a finite mind trying to explore infinite. We finite mind cannot until and unless we have been driven by the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. What the Word says and is going to talk to us only through the language, what He has written, Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic. Go back, dig that word and expound. Go back, dig that word and learn. Go back, dig that word and look how many great men have laid their lives for it. Look into that word, the usage in the Old Testament, usage in the New Testament, usage in today-to-day -to -day life. Get back those words, learn, expose truth, and reprove. Apply that to your life. 
then you will think in fact you need to say praise the Lord as your salutation you use that the word tahilla meant to say describe the attributes of Bible doctrine in your life or the attributes of Jehovah in your life and now you say praise the Lord how much you are describing the attributes of Jehovah without knowing the meaning you just caught without being realizing the truth behind that you are trafficking in the sense of unfelt truth and that's how your life is you are trafficking in the sense of unfelt truth you may love to make up and patch up in your vocabulary but you are not coming to the real vocabulary without exegesis exegesis is the order of the pulpit exegesis will teach you what is the study of God and the study of God will show you what is your life in Christ. Dear brethren, the way the man cannot discover another man on this earth, far less you think you can make this man to discover God. The foolish mind, professing wise, they became fools. They thought creation could be greater gods than creator. That's what man can do. We read that Isaiah 44, Jeremiah as well cutting the tree, making one part for your wood, one part for your clothing, one part for your shelter. One part you want to make up in your hands, the idol, and you want to stretch down. Does it say long back in the book of Deuteronomy, they have eyes but they cannot see, they have ears but they cannot hear, they have mouth but they cannot talk. Finished. These are just simple things what we are reading now. He says, do they have? The man can understand man in the same way in the medical terms. He worships creation. He doesn't know the creator, but Lord God made Adam in his own image. And through Adam we look, Shem, Ham and Jaf, through Adam we look, Cain and Seth, because Abel was been murdered. In his image, he begat in his image, he says, in the image of Adam. But Adam, the first one, was been made in the image of God. So we need to look. A comparison between the first Adam and the last Adam. He was a living soul, but he was eternal God, came in the form of flesh. So this mind cannot understand until and unless you have the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to teach to you the truth. This mind cannot comprehend. This mind cannot realize until and unless you have been given. Always in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to expound and to know and to apply the scriptures. Therefore, dear brethren, he teaches to us, it is I, I, I that speak. It is I who have called you, it is I who have called you for your advance to prosper in the way of which I have said to walk. Not just to retard, but to advance. What a privilege it is. And then he says, Come, you near unto me, hear you this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. From the time that it was, there I am. And now the Lord God and his Spirit hath sent me his Spirit. Thus said the Lord, the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee to profit. And the word is nothing but Lamad, Mantano plus Didasco, two Greek equivalent words. Lamad is nothing but once again to become disciples, and is going to teach us for profit. And once again is causing us to walk in the way, to advance in the way where he has called us to prosper, to lead us by the way wherewith we shall go. And then, O oh, that thou hast hearkened to my commandments, then had, he's saying in comparison with Jeremiah 44, verses 4 through 6, they haven't heard, therefore my, ha my fury came upon them. Thus he says, that thou hast hearkened to my commandments, then had thy peace been as a river, thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. <laughs> so where are you in search of peace today? Clearing not your debt, you want to have peace? He says, Oh, that you would have heard to my commandments. And he says, Number one, peace as a river. Number two, righteousness as the sea. Number three, seed has been as the sand. 
and the offspring of the bubbles like the gravel thereof. His name shouldn't have been cut off nor destroyed from before me. The same thing he says for us. The children of the righteous one shall be mighty on this earth. And go you forth of Babylon, flee from the Chaldeans with the voice of singing. Declare you, tell this, utter it even to the ends of the earth. Say that the Lord hath redeemed his servant Jacob. That will happen after the terms of tribulation. And they thirsted not. He led them through the deserts. He caused the waters to flow out of the rock for them. He clave the rock also, and the waters gushed out. And this is what he says, the things, what he has taken them out in the wilderness. And then there is no peace of the Lord God unto the wicked, Russia criminals. No matter however you may think you can analyze, you may think you have great peace and prosperity in this life, <laughs> without the knowledge of Bible doctrine, Without becoming valor and vigor in the word of the Lord our God, you cannot truly understand the truth in Christ. Therefore, dear brethren, understand about these things, so that you can truly know your purpose in the church age, and you could be available to the praise of His glory. So think over these issues, which way you want to go. You decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow, as Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlightens us to learn more and more through the power of Him to be a faithful and true witnesses all the days of our life in each and every breath of our thinking to the praise of His glory. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. Inaudibly telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour. That is the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us for very simple. Believe in Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to pause us to know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest matter is to carry the Satan of God. Herald the word in season and out of season, because the diamond of witnesses will have been called. The number one diamond of my witnesses in well Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands, and number two diamond of my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, and do not worry besides nature, the entire angelic host will be witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brother, and you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow to the praise of his glory to the highest. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great and unique privilege it is, O Lord, for us to learn about thy truth. As his people know not, how a finite man can serve the infinite except being in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Let the love to comment and do many things, O Lord, but you have called to do thy will, which is to put, to shut their mouth, who are ignorant and foolish people, not knowing thy will. Only when we could become the servants of Lord God. So help us, Father, as many people who are going to listen to these things according to thy will, according to thy glory, according to thy grace. Let them be faithful and humble servants of all the days of their life as which, O oh Lord, you have called us to represent thee in truth and in great power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Help us, Lord, and Lord, to do thy will and nothing else than that. And see if there is an offense way in us, Father, lead us in the way of everlasting truth. And if there is anything which are offensive in this message, O oh Lord, kindly cleanse us and give us greater wisdom unto thee, so that, Lord, when we stand back in thy presence, you are our witnesses for the words that we spoke. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name, we pray, sovereign Lord, the Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten and challenge us by this word. Amen.